New Radio Sports Network. Welcome back to another edition of the show with head coach Pat Mickage from your Green Bay Gamblers. They got off to their home schedule last week, a 7-1 defeat to Dubuque. Uh, you were able to score that goal because I know uh, that's that's always that big worry is, you know, obviously the fun starts when you get that goal. Nicholas Van Tassel was able to get that goal. And first of all, after not being able to see that happened last year. I believe last year everybody just had their teddy bears in, in uh, you know, plastic bags and passing them out on the way in. What was it like to see that uh, come down during that first period? Oh, it was fun for the players. I mean, traditionally you have the guys that were there the year before that kind of talk the young players through uh, what it's going to look like and how, you know, we're going to help clean them up and everything that way. And I think we had only had one player that had been part of the teddy bear toss two years ago. So it was uh Brand new to everybody for the most part, and uh, but it was fun. You know, it's always a great atmosphere, and and they when they start coming from the sky, you're you're always wondering when the last one's going to drop, and then they just kind of keep coming and coming and coming. So uh, it was great of our fans to come out and and uh, make it such a great experience. I still remember when I worked for the Gamblers, getting hit by a few teddy bears, but I don't think getting hit by a teddy bear feels uh, that bad when you realize where those teddy bears are going to. Yeah, exactly. You know, you you know they're going to a great cause, and uh, you know, hopefully, some some child somewhere is getting a, the appreciation of it here already this week. But uh, yeah, I stand pretty close to the glass after because they do end up in the bench on a regular basis. Bring out the old World War II helmet or something like that. Just to- yeah, something to protect me. Uh, after that, obviously, the game got away from me a little bit. The uh, end result seven to one in favor of Dubuque, and what were maybe what was maybe that discussion you had with your team, obviously a young team uh, facing a, a good opponent, as you've said in the past, uh, what was that message to your team after uh, the three periods were done? Well, I think it, it's a great measuring stick. And, you know, once we as a staff got through the video and, you know, you could see how many teachable moments there are. And, you know, we have a lot of young players playing in very key situations and, and, you know, playing against a very strong Dubuque team that's, you know, got what I consider the best line in the league with the Halliday line. And, you know, we have to learn and teach and, and find ways to, you know, compete against those top guys in the league. And, and that's going to, it's going to take a little bit of growth with our young players, but, you know, there was a lot of facets in that game that we could have been better and that we traditionally are. And it's good teachable moments, as we say. What were some of the facets that that maybe you were surprised by with how they performed? Well, I, I thought we struggled offensively in the offensive zone. We just did not have the puck as much as we traditionally do. Uh, and it, the, the game had a weird flow of lots of penalties. And so it just we did not establish a five-on-five game uh, anywhere near where Dubuque did. And, you know, they were able to sustain pressure on us. And we just never got to that normal green bay gamblers ozone play that you know can wear down an opponent and how hard is that because obviously you know hockey certainly has more of an ebb and flow to it than really any other sport how important is it to be able to establish your style of hockey early in a game well i mean that's you know last year's group was great at it you know i mean we kind of would come out and and make sure that early in a game, you know, we we possessed pucks and, and we weren't having those soft turnovers that led to easy transition from the other team. And, and that, you know, we're going to have to grow into that. I mean, that's that's a big part of what we want to do. And and we just did not possess it. And and it, then you're trying to chase a game. And, you know, we played defense way more than we want to. And but a big part of that is how little we played offense. And you get to face Dubuque again next Saturday. That one will be out on the road. And I guess this is going to be a part of a two-part question. First of all, are there benefits to, you know, kind of getting a game like this out of the way early? And is there a benefit to you? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of weekends where, you know, you're able to play these teams the very next night and kind of get that taste out of your mouth right away. But they have that week to look at tape you know, is there a benefit to having this week to really take a look at that film and, and try it, try them again on Saturday? Yeah, I think a lot of our teaching this week is not just about Dubuque. It's, it's about us and realizing the things that we need to improve on as a group that we need to be able to do against everybody we play. So that's where our teaching is at this week. I think the challenge uh, we've got Cedar Rapids here in our own building on Friday. So we'll spend some time focusing on that. 
Um, and then and then we'll turn that page to Dubuque on Saturday, a team that we're familiar with because we played them in the preseason. We played them this past weekend. It, we just have to do, you know, a better job of, you know, dictating dictating things early. So I think a lot of that is us. Like we need to work on things that are all Green Bay gamblers right now. And you mentioned already Cedar Rapids coming up on Friday. One of the teams you didn't get to face last year. Check taking a quick look here to see some of the other ones. You'll have Madison at the end of the month. I believe another team you didn't get to see last year. Um, have you had a chance to see them at that fall classic? And, and is there, I guess, what are you thinking about these teams that, you know what, you didn't get to face last year. You, you didn't get to see, see them at all. And how are you going to approach those games? Yeah. Cedar Rapids. I got to watch over in Pittsburgh and, and Mark Carlson's done a nice job putting that group back together. Um, you know, they're excited to be playing. You know, I, I, I think going back to their building, their fan base is going to be very excited. So that'll be an interesting road trip when we see them there. But, you know, uh, Mark's teams are always going to be great in transition. So, you know, we'll make sure we're locked in this week on, you know, slowing teams down through the middle of the ice. And, and then Madison, who we'll talk about later in the month, we got to see them twice in the preseason. So got a little bit of a feel for what their group looks like. And you mentioned um, before we came on Cedar Rapids, you didn't get to play them last year because a windstorm ripped, ripped apart their building a little bit. Is that something that you got to have to prepare your team for that little extra juice that that crowd's going to have knowing that for the first time in 12 months, they'll be able to go and fill their own building. Yeah. I mean, it's gotta be very exciting for them, you know, just to, you know, know, cause it's a great fan base in Cedar Rapids and it's a smaller building, but a loud building. And so I know that with the windstorm last year, basically tore one wall right off of the building. And so electrical and all those things just led to a much slower rebuild than they, they wanted. So, you know, to miss an entire season was disappointing for them, but it's uh, it's always fun to go back. I talked to Mark um, at, in Pittsburgh and they did some nice upgrades to their building with a new uh, video scoreboard and, and some of that too. So I think the fan base will be extremely excited to have the Rough Riders back. And obviously seven to one, it's sometimes hard to pick out a couple of players that, that you felt really good about playing, but um, maybe behind the score sheet a little bit, who are maybe those players that kind of stuck out to you of having really good performances last week? Yeah, I gotta be honest. The, the video showed a lot of disappointing performances, but you know, it was Dominic Ravelli's first game. Uh, he got involved physically, you know, got pucks into the right areas, used his skating. So it was good to see him gain a little experience in this league. And and then uh, for the rest of our group, I think they all know that, you know, we need to be better as a whole. So there's not a lot of positives to talk about after that Saturday performance. And for your veterans, and I know last year we talked about how great of a kind of a leadership core that you had that never got too high, never got too low, kind of kept everybody level. Are you seeing that type of leadership core develop with this year's squad? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a quieter group, I think. Uh, but they've showed up, you know, and they wanted to work yesterday. You know, they didn't come back pouty or anything like that. They knew they needed to be better. They wanted to, you know, watch some video and and see things that we had immediately for them. but. It's uh, it's 62 games. I said it to you earlier. If if it was game 55, I might just say we're not even going to look at this video. But, you know, this is an important time of the year to, you know, learn from disappointment and and, and find ways to, you know, understand that, you know, we have to create an identity, a culture that you know, we carry in night in and night out. And, you know, that's that's part of what that leadership core will be, you know, asked to do. And that's got to be important for you as well. You don't have to kind of bring your own energy to the group or try to get people excited, get people to care. It sounds like they came into the building uh, this week and they're, they're ready to chomping at the bit to try to improve. That That's exactly it. And, and they're not pointing fingers, you know, they're, they're all taking it on themselves. And that's, that's what a great leadership core does. And, and we'll actually meet with them again today as a bigger group. And kind of you know talk about the rest of this week and, and and making sure we have the right message going to everybody while walking onto the ice Friday night. Well, very good. Well, this Friday night we'll have the game for you on the new Radio Sports Network as the Gamblers will be at home once again to face Cedar Rapids before they go out onto the road to face that tough Dubuque team again on Saturday, and then after that you're back on the road and you'll be home on October 22nd, but we'll talk to you well before that next home game after this week. Once again, we'll be featured 
on the new Radio Sports Network. Coach, as always, we thank you so much for joining us, and good luck this week. All right. Appreciate it, Tim. Have a great week. Yep. And for the new Radio Sports Network, I'm Tim Coles.